I mean, what is sort of your protocol as far as maybe how do you implement a little bit of resistance training in here too? Because I'm sure people are wondering that you do a lot of this kind of training. Clearly you do some resistance training too. Like how do you meld that in? After today's video, I put a link down below for Element Electrolytes. They are not sweetened with erythritol. Element Electrolytes are 1000 milligrams sodium, 200 milligrams potassium and 60 milligrams magnesium. But that link down below gets you a free sample variety pack with any purchase of Element Electrolytes. So whether you purchase their sparkling, whether you purchase their stick packs or whatever, you get a free sample variety pack and that's exclusively using my link down below. That is drinklmnt.com slash Thomas. Again, drinklmnt.com slash Thomas. Really interesting stuff. They curb my appetite entirely, but I also have them in a fasted state and I sip on them during my fasted workouts because I feel like I actually get replenished, but I also get my cravings satisfied. So that link is down below in the description. And, that, and that's probably one of the biggest, I would say my biggest drawbacks is, is the resistance training over the years. And I've recently in the past year really focused a lot more on that. I, um, I actually do a lot of dumbbell for my resistance training um, with the exception of my legs, which I do a lot of Peloton, um, or I'll do lunges and Peloton, you know, high resistance Pelotoning where I, like I said, I'm like getting, I'm getting my yeah. quads and stuff. Um, I do a lot of like lower, I would say, um, it's, it's like, I'm, I'm fatiguing my muscles, but it's not necessarily, I'm like not super good going super hard, heavy. Mm -hmm. I'm going hard, but not super heavy. Right. And so it's like, um, I'll just do my, I'll do my dumbbell and I'll turn on a Peloton programming thing. And I'm just, it's like doing a lot of paired sets and drop sets where I'm just totally fatigued <laughs> and there's no stopping and I'm switching and I'm like just done after, but Same. like, yeah. I don't need to, you know, lift that heavy. Now it doesn't mean I shouldn't ever, maybe I, I think I need to incorporate more, but I think I need the right equipment. Like I don't have a bench right now. And I feel like yeah. I've already tried, I've already sort of somewhat injured myself by not like doing a lot of shoulder ones without like doing heavier ones yeah. without having the, the bench. And so um, I, I do a lot of dumbbell training, honestly, for my resistance training. And sometimes I'll just like in the middle of the day, I'll just tell my husband, I'm like, hey, let's go do, let's go lift weights. And honestly, we'll just quickly do like a 10, 15 minute workout. That's just fatigue. And then I just, I'm, I'm like, okay, that's my break. Yeah. No, totally. You know? it's, it's funny because that's like resistance training has almost become supplemental in my mind because I think people have this thought process that you need a lot of it. You really don't like genetics play a role, all these different things, diet, all these things. But I've started and granted, I mean, full disclaimer, yes, I have clay mass on me already. Like, so to maintain, I think you require like 25% the volume as you do to like build. So I'm aware of that, but I started treating resistance training as like a supplement to my like foundational cardiovascular training. Whereas it used to be the opposite. I used to think resistance training and then supplemental cardio. And it's like now because resistance training doesn't get me the heart rate effect that I want to feel like I'm getting an adequate like metabolic workout. The only way I'm just like you, like I don't lift that heavy. I do a lot of drop sets and I just keep the burn going because I try to not that I want to make it cardiovascular, but I want to feel a benefit on my muscles metabolically. I want that lactate burn. I wore that hydrogen burn, right? I want that response. And I think you said it without really knowing it, but that is key. Like resistance training, although periodization is important, it's like if your foundation is just resistance training, I think you're leaving a lot on the table because you can hit your cardiovascular goals and then have the baseline to be able to go do your resistance training with adequate rest in between and have it be fun and have it be enjoyable. And we talked about this even with zone two stuff, right? Like if you do zone two all the time, that's great. But if you do your vigorous exercise, then it makes it so that zone two can be your enjoyable time. It right. can be the time when you go out for a ruck or go out for a slow jog and you can use it for enjoyment. Have a conversation with a friend or, you know, a significant other. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I do try to focus a lot of my, my, my training on high intensity and for the brain benefits, you know, for the VO2 max, which I haven't actually directly measured. Um, but I do, there is a lab here in San Diego that I'm planning on going to. So, um, that, you know, hopefully I'll be able to then use my Norwegian four by four to, to improve that, um, as well. 
but uh, you know, the, the, the brain derived neurotrophic factor is also something I'm just super interested in, in optimizing for because of particularly because of the neuro, the brain affects the neurodegenerative disease and cognition effects as well. Yeah. Right. So I want to be able to improve that. And I did, I think, you know, I mentioned that um, I have a, a BDNF training protocols, like a free guide that I've generated where it's a lot of evidence based, like what kind of exercise, what, you know, what time and duration intensity has been shown to increase BDNF in people, um, has been shown to improve cognition, not only exercise, but also other lifestyle factors. So hot baths, hot tubs, saunas have been shown to increase brain derived neurotrophic factor. Again, what, what, um, heat or what temperature, what duration, those types of protocols are in this free BDNF guide that he created, as well as like other things like omega-3 increases BDNF. So what dose does, does that? Polyphenols from things like um, cocoa as well. And these are also, I have in that, in that guide, just like things that I also do, my protocols as well. Um, but it's a free guide. And it's, I think it's, you know, it's a, a kind of a useful tool because they're just evidence-based you know, protocols that can be done that have been shown to increase brain derived neurotrophic factor, which at the end of the day, I think is a very, very important, um, you know, biomarker for brain health, for longevity, um, you know, in, in general, you know, I just think it's good for mostly cognition and brain health. Yeah, no, and we'll link out to that. And it's just bdnfprotocols.com, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, so super easy. And we'll link out to it just in like, probably like the second line of the description. So, and that's a totally free guide too. Totally free. Yeah. That's cool. I mean, it's, with BDNF, um, you may or may not know the answer to this, but does someone can someone get more efficient at producing it? So, is it if you took someone off the street that had never worked out before? And again, there may not be an answer to this, and like put them through a workout that would elicit X amount of BDNF, and then you trained them for a while, would they get more efficient at producing it? Like, is it an adaptation where the body says, "Okay, yeah, hell yeah, bring it on," and starts producing more, or is it something where it's more like? whoa, this is a crazy trauma shock to the body. We produce a bunch in the beginning and then we get less efficient or less producing less. I don't know that that's ever really been directly measured that I've seen. Um, you know, some there's, there is a lot of genetic variation in producing BDNF, in producing lactate. And the lactate is part of, you know, what regulates increasing BDNF. So um, there's going to be individual variation there just from genetics. But is, is, in terms of training, um, it's an interesting question because, you know, some of the, you know, the BDNF also is part of the, the stress response, right? So like when you're stressing your body, you're making more BDNF. It's interesting because uh, there is somewhat, if you look in the literature, it's like definitely an intensity duration component to, to BDNF production. So like the more intense the workout and the longer, the better the BDNF production, but it's, and it, when you have both, it's the best. So like 30 minutes at 80% max heart rate was the best yeah. versus like, you know, 20 minutes at 80% max heart rate or 30 minutes at, you know, lower intensity, 65% max heart rate, I think it was. So, so the best of all the best was duration and intensity. Again, going back to that, getting the best of both worlds. Right. But, um, it, it seems as though, the, it's like the area under the curve that's important. So in other words, like it's, it's somewhat of a, it doesn't go like super, super, super high, but it kind of lasts a little bit, if that makes mm -hmm. sense, totally. which is, you know, interesting as well, because it's not like the lactate. I mean, it's like, it's like immediately mm -hmm. gone. It's yeah. like your body, your brain sucking it up, your heart sucking it up, your muscles sucking it up, right? It's like going away, but um, the BDNF kind of hangs around just a little bit longer. I mean, it's still transient, but but it, it is a little bit more of it. Instead of just being like a boom, you release a lot of it. It's kind of like you release it and then it kind of like stays around. And again, that's where intensity and duration together are like the best. Yeah. So well, yeah. You, could you stack stack benefits to sort of extend that? So like Good, yeah. vigorous exercise and then be like, okay, well that path, that means of producing it is done. Let's go sit in a sauna. For yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I've never seen that studied in humans uh, directly, but animal studies have shown that in, that exercise plus sauna is better at increasing BDNF than exercise alone. So it does seem to have an additive effect, at least in animal studies. Now, also the same goes for cardiorespiratory fitness. So human studies have found that that endurance exercise, like aerobic exercise, I should say, not endurance, aerobic exercise 
can improve is associated with improved VO2 max compared to like not exercising, right? Obviously. Um, but if you, if you add sauna on top of that, the VO2 max improvements are even better. And that's in both observational studies as well as a interventional trial that was done by Yari Laukonen out of Eastern Finland. He, um, took people and he put them on an exercise protocol or a exercise plus sauna protocol, and then measured changes in their cardiorespiratory fitness. So VO2 max and exercise did improve VO2 max, but exercise plus sauna improved it even more. (laughs) So there seems to be additive effects with heat stress, deliberate heat exposure, and, you know, exercise with respect to brain derived neurotrophic factor, at least if we're looking at animal studies and then VO2 max if looking at humans. So another reason why, you know, and I get this question a lot, like, you know, well, I am physically active. I like train this and this and this, like, do I need to do sauna on top of that? And it's like, well, you really like the most important thing you're doing, you're doing like exercise. There's nothing better, nothing, you know? So that's done. But like, do you want to go a step above that? Because if you do, yeah, adding in a hot tub and I say hot tub because now there's increasing evidence that you know, hot tubs is also doing a lot of the same things that sauna is. It's just a different modality of heating up your body, right? Um, That you're going to get improvements as well, additive improvements in VO2 max. I also think in brain-derived neurotrophic factor. I don't see why that wouldn't be conserved in humans. Yeah. Just has, no one's really directly studied it yet. 